Hey everybody, it's Romania Black, and we are on Spy Times Family. <laughs> I think it's Spy X Family, Spy Times Family, Spy Family, <laughs> episode two uh, reaction. I will figure out how to say it properly by episode three, but I could not wait <laughs> after watching episode one. I couldn't wait a week. No, so I'm recording this uh, a little bit early, so I have not gotten any feedback or comments yet for uh, the first Spy Family, but I, I really thought that the pilot episode was super cute and super good. Like setting up Lloyd, setting up Anya, setting up how similar their characters' backstories kind of are, even though Lloyd is not a telepath <laughs> like Anya is, except no one knows except Anya. Um, but setting up how similar their characters are and then just setting up how Lloyd is the fish out of the water father figure And so he's gonna have to raise Anya um, Up while getting ready to perform this mission where they have to infiltrate the Academy to get a hold of this political man's son That's there to kind of use him as far as espionage goes, but they can't do that yet because they have to get a wife <laughs> Lloyd has to get married. There has to be a mom and him present for the interview with Anya. So I've seen a little bit of promotional art where I've seen a dark haired woman and I'm assuming that is who the wife is going to be, but I don't know anything about her. I don't know if she's a spy herself or if she has special powers kind of like Anya or if she's just somebody completely normal with no special powers whatsoever. I don't know. I don't know at all how this is gonna go down, but I'm very, very curious to find out. So, with that being said, I'm very excited to see how this is going to go down and uh, what we're all going to get involved with. So we shall see, right? But uh, in any case, I, I'm excited to start this episode. I hope y'all are too and to see what ends up happening. The last episode was a blast. Like I loved it. It was so much fun. And so I'm curious to see what all our crew is going to get themselves into with episode two. So and we haven't seen an OP yet, so maybe we'll get that in this episode as well. Uh, I did like the, uh, the ED a lot. It was kind of like, like lo-fi. I liked it a lot. It was cool. But let's not waste any more time, shall we? We're going to start a Spy Family episode two, and we're going to do that here in three, two, one, and let's go. Oh, this was precious. <laughs> Gosh, what a fun show. I, I'm already really on board with this, just how fun it is and the humor of it. It's playing to a lot of like tropes and things with spy narratives and just kind of kind of poking fun respectfully at them, right? There's lots of things they're poking fun at, but it's not it's not doing like what Camilla does. Camilla's a straight up bitch. I was like, no, it's not pulling a Camilla in this. Um, I like that the show, it treats the fun spy tropes. It doesn't mock them or it's not mean spirited. It's a very like very fun and um, it's paying homage to the spy tropes, but it's also like poking, poking fun at them in a very, in a very respectful way. And I really like that. The OP is great, by the way. The OP is like old classic, like crime noir with like all the funky colors. And then it transitions to like, it transitions to like a cartoon drawing from Anya's perspective. And then it cuts back to the reality of the show. It's freaking adorable. I love it. It has a very like 60s, 70s vibe to it with a little bit of 50s rolled in. It's really cool. I like it. Very 50s and 60s, I think more than anything. But... Oh my gosh, the uh, Anya and Lloyd, and now we have your. Oh my God, it's abs. I'm I'm all about your. <laughs> your is great. She's wonderful so far. We'll talk about her. We'll talk about your. But I, I feel bad for Frankie. Old Frankie. He's he's Lloyd's only friend. He he's that one guy that's always you know there, and he gets Mrs. Doubt fired in the beginning. And is like, no, it's not gonna work. And he's like, are you kidding? And I like that Anya cannot accept this mama. <laughs> It's like, you're just not cut out for the motherly role, Frank. I like that Frankie is is willing to help Lloyd. He feels for him. He feels like he needs to help him. It's like, great. And I love that he says, you're literally a spy. Couldn't you have done the disguise better? And he's like, you can put lipstick on a pig, <laughs> but it's not going to help, right? He's like, mm. He's like, I, there's only so much I can do with your height and physique. And he's like, well, thank you too. He's like, I volunteered for this. And I love that, that Anya's like, have a peanut. Anya's just going to like raid every, just give peanuts to everybody to make them feel better. Mm-hmm. So our boy, I feel like I'm going to be going, I'm not going to go over the OP again because I feel like I'm going to be like breaking that 
OP apart as we go. There's a lot of elements in it, and I feel like I'm going to be um, breaking it down as we go through the series. But so Wise, Wise is the name of the spy group with the side eye. Only fitting. We have Operation Strix that our boy Lloyd is trying to do, has to find a wife to make it all work out, to get in the, which we found out that one of yours, one of Camilla's friends is a kid that's going to Eden College. So that will be interesting. There's a connection there. So that's fascinating. So he's like, I need to explore my options. I like that Frankie asks the question that we've all been, he asks the question we were all thinking of, like, why don't you just get somebody from the spy organization? Like, why are we going through this? Wouldn't that be the easiest route? But... Lloyd brings up that several of them were busted in a recent incident and he doesn't think any of them will not be suspicious. And it's like, okay, okay, Mangaka, that's how you're getting around that one. Gotcha. But, oh, uh, you're, our girl, you're. So a thief must have entered our office. So these people, and so it says a thief entered. So, okay, going back through this a second time and catching what they were saying, a thief entered the office and searched the drawers for information regarding the girls. So the question is, was that... Was that Frankie getting information about the girls to give to Lloyd or was it someone else trying to get information about Yor because she's an assassin? So we don't know for sure which it is, right? I don't think it's Frankie. I think it's the latter because I think Frankie just went to like a public records place to find what he needed. He didn't have to go sneaking into there. Hmm. And so we have these gossiping girls. We have Camilla and these other girls that are talking about, you know, office gossip and things like that. And then we have Yor, and all three of them are pretty, but Yor is the prettiest one of all. It's like, she's so, so sweet, right? Okay, and so they talk about Sharon. So Sharon, okay, Sharon, the one with the glasses, she has the kid. Okay, maybe she's the one with the kid at the party. Old Sharon, because she says, you don't bother anymore about your figure once you have a kid. And it's like, hmm. So she could be suspicious, interesting, all right. I don't know. I feel like there's something, I feel like maybe they're tying something together with the fact that someone was trying to sneak in. This one has a kid at Eden College. I'm trying to think if maybe they're going to incorporate her into the story somehow. If she's not suspicious, she could be somebody that could put a damper on Lloyd and uh, yours operation if, if they're found out that either one of them are a spy or an assassin. Hmm. And so that's going to be things creepy. She's like, oh, sorry. And they're like, is that the section chief's coffee? Let's put some boogers in it. And she's like, oh, will that make it taste better? She's so pretty, but she's very aloof. And at first I wondered if it was all an act. If I'm like, is she just pretending to be that like naive and gullible? But no, she's really gullible in real life. That's her actual personality. She just also is an assassin. It's like, what? And I love the fact that, that they all don't know. They're all a bunch of liars. And they don't know each other's, like, Lloyd doesn't know she's an assassin. She doesn't know Lloyd is a spy. They don't know Anya's a telepath. It's like they none of them know each other and they're all using each other for different means without knowing one another. I, I did not predict that. I really thought that going into this, they would, like, have a powwow and be like, okay, let's do this for each other for the mission. But no, that's not it at all. That none of them know what each other's about, at least not yet, right? And so they kind of like, they're kind of awful to her. They're really awful to Yor. They, they pass off at first like, oh, you've got a nice face and body, Yor. You, you know, you're 27. You shouldn't be single anymore. You'd be a knockout if you dressed up. And she's like, oh, okay. And they're like, we could give you some makeup tips. And she's like, okay, cool. And she's like, I just want to keep this job. Like, and the thing of it is, is that she's just trying to keep a job so she can be an undercover assassin and not be suspicious. Like there's nothing else to it. And this Camilla woman, she's the worst. She's like, oh, you're 27. You got to be careful, you know. It's like, there's a lot of spies around lately, you know. So she, like, teases her. It's kind of on the nose. But she teases her and she's like, there's been a lot of spies arrested. And they suspect people that, like, women in their late 20s that aren't married, they seem suspicious. So that's where Yor gets the idea of, oh, so that I'm not suspicious and I can do my mission I need to be married. Like that's, and that's as, that's as simple as it comes. Yours like, that's all I need. I just need to find a husband and then everything will be okay. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's crazy. And so, yeah. And so the woman Sharon that smokes, she's like, it's very unheard of to be single at that age. Very suspicious. I'm like, you're suspicious lady with a kid. And they're like, and she's like, oh, thanks for the warning. She's just so 
No, and she's so blunt about it, right? She takes it like at face value. And so Camilla pulls this like mean girl shit where she's like, you should come with us and bring your partner. Come to my party. And, and yours like, oh, I don't have a boyfriend. And then they're like, maybe the creeper who snuck into this place will go with her. I'm like, that's so mean. Uh, which again, was it, was it Frankie and them that stole the info or was it someone else? Hmm. But yeah, like she can clearly hear them. That's awful. Like what a bunch of winches. Mm -mm. I feel for your, I do. So Briar residence, of course she's the thorn princess and her, she's your Briar. Oh my God. I love her earrings. They're very interesting. So she has a brother named Yuri. Uh, and I have, I'm pretty sure he doesn't figure skate, <laughs> but he's her younger brother that seems very protective of her. And she's like, don't worry, I'm employed. And he's like, he's like, I'm worried about you. You're kind of unusual. And she's like, how rude. I'm completely normal. And he's like, uh-huh. And so he asks her to get married. I'm like, does he know if she's an assassin or not? Does he not realize she's an assassin? Has she lied to him too? Hmm. And he's like, there's a chance I might get promoted. So that means he's like, I'm going to get promoted. So I won't be able to help you. I'm like, she seems like a grown ass woman, but I get where he's coming from being a brother. It's like, ah. Uh, I also love her room. I love that it's this minimalist room, but like the red, like red is her color, like the red chair, the red dress, the blood of her enemies, you know, it, red is definitely her color. It suits her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like this whole setup, I feel like this setup of, of your with, with Lloyd and Anya is like, if it was Sailor Moon, it'd be like Ray with Andrew and Rini. And I'm like, I don't know what to, I don't know what to make of that. But yeah, so she's like, he's like, I could set you up. And she's like, no, I don't want you to set me up with anybody. I, I'm going to this party and I, I'll have my boyfriend there. And he's like, what, you're dating someone? So she's like, crap. Like, uh, she kind of digs herself into a hole and she's like, uh, yeah. And he, he thinks that, okay, cool. Well, then my friend will be there. So her boy, so your friend Camilla, her boyfriend is my friend. He can tell me all about your guy. And I'm like, I'm a little worried because this seems like he seems like a very, very protective older brother or younger brother. He seems like the very protective younger brother. He wanted his friend to keep tabs on him. And that was just a boyfriend. I'm like, so when you find out that she's married, you're going to freak out. She didn't say anything about it on the phone. So I'm like, mm. and it just so happens to align that she's looking for a boyfriend to take to the party. Lloyd is looking for a wife to go to the academy with him. And Anya is a telepath that can read minds and know what they're both thinking. And I'm like, Anya's amazing. I freaking love her. So then, yeah, Yor says if he finds out I'm lying, he'll think I'm a weirdo and a pathological liar. Or he'll think that you're very relatable because he's kind of a liar, <laughs> as Anya has found out. Mm -hmm. And he'll lose even more trust in me, which is what she needs. I need to find someone for the sake of my little brother's promotion. And she's like, oh, you're, you've got the wrong idea. I was joking earlier. And he's like, oh. So whoever the shopkeeper is, the one that is giving her orders, knows that her and her brother have a close relationship. So that's interesting. And she's like, oh, shopkeeper. I didn't realize it was you. And he's like, good evening. I have a client for you, Thorn Princess. And she instantly, like, instantly becomes murderous like just instantly zeroes in i'm like oh my god what the royal hotel so that's why she dressed up mm. 1307 oh my god and just comes in like wonder woman with this beautiful outfit like a girl that can assassinate in high heels i and like just comes in looking drop dead gorgeous and she's like the traitorous scumbag is staying here and like girl She's an assassin. And she just like beats the snot out of him. It's an ambush, a lone woman. <laughs> and she just kills all of them. Oh my God. I love this. She's like, Mr. Brennan from the auditing department, I presume. I'm terribly sorry if I interrupted anything. May I have the honor of taking your life? Like she's so sincere about it. I'm like, oh my God. I can't say she's Yandere. Nah. No, not really. Mm-mm. And codename Thorn Princess. So Twilight and Thorn Princess. Okay. An assassin. 
She was taught the skills from her trade from a young age. So her brother surely knew about all this and has done dirty work for employer requested ever since. Hmm. She's like, oh, the blood's not coming off my hands. And I ripped my dress. What shall I do? Wow, the only nice dress I own. Ha! Gonna have to go shopping, you know. And so I, it makes sense that she's like, I don't have a partner because I'm an assassin. That line of work just doesn't really let you have anybody that you're with. Kind of like the situation that Lloyd is in, right? Uh, and she's like, it's hopeless when it comes... This line! She says, when it comes to homemaking, cleaning is the only thing I can do. I was like, mic drop. I was like, oh my God, girl. Like, I only know how to clean house. <laughs> she's amazing. I love your... She's wonderful, and I want to support her in all of her endeavors. So they have this stack of all the unmarried women from City Hall, right? And and Lloyd's like, thanks. So they're like, it can't be somebody divorced. They have to be refined enough for a prestigious school and is willing to get married within 48 hours. And I love that Frankie's like, if a goddess like that exists, I'd love to meet her. Well... You are lucky, Frankie, because your is that goddess. Mm -hmm. I'm not picky at all, yet I can't even get a date. Ha! He's like, how unfortunate. He's like, don't pity me, asshole! And so, uh, Anya's saying, is having a kid bad? Am I in the way? And he's like, no, I love that Lloyd gives her head pats. Like, no, you're fine. You're not in the way at all. Oh, and she's a telepath, so she can read his mind. So if he was lying to her, she'd know. That's why she gets a little blushy face. And she's like, okay. I'm like, oh, and he's like, go watch some TV. Go on, kid. Go let your brain rot over there. <laughs> I love that she loves the show Spy Wars. And she's like saying all the catchphrases and stuff. It's great. And then Frankie asks him about the female work from his agency. And a lot of them got caught in recent spy hunts. I couldn't find a good match. And so as we see old uh, spy man on screen holding this bosomy woman in his arms being like, you won't get away with this. So there's a romance subplot in this show. I, I was wondering if the show itself was going to be mirroring the actual show Spy Family. Like throughout if it was going to be like mirroring it and Anya like makes the connections. But hmm. And so we don't have enough agents and I've got another mission on top of this. And then Frankie's like, man, you sure got it rough. So they're working you to the bone. He's like, I know. Let's get this over with. The quickest option would be women in bad circumstances who'd cooperate with you. Finding dirt on them could help. Hmm. I want to see what that one that he lifted up, Clara Meyer said. It seemed like it was, they kept going back to that name on the sheet. Hmm. Non Non-combatant certificate of identity. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. And yeah, Lloyd's like, I don't want to avoid anything risky. And he's like, well, what about Anya? She's pretty risky. She don't look like a princess from a rich family. And he's like, oh yeah. He's like, I kind of need to find her some new clothes if she's going to go to this interview, aren't I? Hmm. I like that Lloyd's like, dang it, I didn't think about that. You've got a point. We'll at least make her look, look more legit, like a, a upper class citizen. I love it. It's so cute, though, with Anya. Like, Anya holding her little arms out and getting measurements. She's like, I'm being sold off somewhere. And he's like, you won't be if you behave. <laughs> he's like, where does she learn to talk like that? It's like, you, you're, you Lloyd, you know. Uh. And so I like that we have Lloyd um, going through, like, all the women there and being like, okay, this one won't work, this one won't work. I got very 101 Dalmatians vibes from this episode, and I think it was not only the OP has kind of like a, a edge to it too, but I kept thinking of Disney's animated 101 Dalmatians of when Pongo and Purdy's like owners like meet each other, like um oh Roger and Anita when they meet. Mm hmm And it's like it's love at first sound. And the best part where he's like, it's love at first sight is that she snuck up behind him. <laughs> like, what a spy move, right? Uh, they're so perfect for one another because yeah, he's the spy, she's the assassin. And they instantly, like, have great chemistry with one another. And they're both basically lying to each other about why they're going to get married and be together. It's, it's the best. <laughs> and I like that right now they don't have any attraction towards one another. Not really. They're just doing this out of convenience. 
And the funny thing is that, like, Camilla says at the party, uh, Lloyd is hot. Like, he's very good looking. And yours beautiful. But Lloyd has resigned himself that this is just for the mission. He's not easily swayed by people's appearances. So that doesn't, like, make him instantly be like, oh, I love you. And then with her, she's so gullible. She's so gullible and kind of aloof that him being hot doesn't really even seem to phase her. She's not even thinking about that. It's great. But the genius of this episode, the genius of it is this conversation between Yor and Lloyd where they both doubt that each other will work out and Anya is the mediator because Anya's the telepath who can who can see how they're talking in their heads and she's like, oh, he's somebody's Oh, this is somebody's husband. Like, I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to be killed for flirting with him. I heard that happens. And Anya's like, she's like, I could just kill them back. And Anya's like, wait, what? She's like, oh, no, I couldn't. If I did, if I think like this, someone will eventually find out I'm an assassin. And Anya's like, an assassin? <laughs> Anya's, she's like, a spy and an assassin. Yes. I'm like, oh, my God. She's like, I'm so excited. I love, she's like, she's a little girl that's just been watching spy TV shows and thinks they're cool, and she's like, it could happen in real life to me! And so she's all about it. Mm -hmm. And I love that she's just trying to set them up based on that. It's so freaking adorable. I also love that on, that you're, you're like, she's like, I shouldn't kill anybody. Like, she's an assassin, but it's hard for her to maintain this, like, normal status quo, right? And so Anya has to take matters into her own hands and play matchmaker. It's It's wonderful. And so, yeah, they decide that he'll go to her party and she'll go to the interview and they might just get married. And we'll, well, at the time, he she didn't know about the marriage thing. He was going to, like, try to get her to marry him for the event. But that wasn't on the table to begin with, right? And so then, yeah, I like that we get the 7-Elevens uh, reference, the little making fun of it. Mm -hmm. It's cute. And she thinks, I... <sighs> The funny thing about it is that Yor thinks that Lloyd is just simple and pure and kind. And Lloyd is, in many cases, pulling the wool over her eyes. But he is, he is a kind man. He has a kind heart. He just, unfortunately, is a spy. <laughs> so he can't exactly show that all the time. He's like, I'll get her to agree to a formal marriage in the end. It's like, they're just a match made in heaven, the two of them. It's great. And Anya's like, yes. <laughs> so... He's like, I got a sitter. I like that he's like, I got a sitter. I, my second favorite part of this episode is when he's like, I've got a sitter, so you better behave. And Anya goes, stock up on them peanuts. <laughs> That's such an on-the-nose thing, because if you've ever babysat a kid, especially a little, little kid, food is the best, the best means of handling it. Give that kid some food, sit him down, play some games, you're fine. And so I love that Anya's like, oh, I'll be good. If you have me enough peanuts, let's stock. Up. I just love that the, the translation, the sub is stock up on them peanuts. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. That cracks me up to no end. I absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. And so obviously the guy working at the, at the supermarket is a informant himself, which of course he is. Of course he found that Lloyd, but he's like, here, Tencent is your change ribbit. Mm, she's like, ribbit. So he's like, so I, he said a T, no, an F cipher. So I figured he said T for toad, but it's F for frog, a F cipher. Hmm, interesting. Nice. I love the, I love the little spy stuff that's embedded in this show. Like the little, the tropes that we all think about as Anya's watching her spy TV show. And he's like using the stuff to pry everything open. Mm -hmm. The extra mission. Okay retrieving the art pieces that were stolen and eliminating the smuggling ring on top of your other jobs. I mean, I'm glad that he ended up going to the party because I thought it was gonna be one of those things where he really doesn't show up and it was gonna kind of ruin everything. But no, instead, hilarity ensues, right? I love that Frankie, Frankie's like, I'm just an informant. My fighting skills are literal trash. That's my third favorite part of this whole thing. Where Frankie, I relate to Frankie. He's like, I'm just giving you intel. Why am I fighting? <laughs> I love Frankie. He's great. He's a great side character in this. He's very relatable. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like, you've just captured Tab. And Lloyd's like, we're getting the 70 art pieces. Don't worry about it. <laughs> They're worth $3 million. It's great. He's like, no one would notice if a few of them went missing. Mm. He's like, leave it to me. I love it. 
So poor Yor, though, she thinks she's getting stood up. And she's so pretty. Like, she has the beautiful, like, little headband on. I love her style with the headband and the earrings. And she's like, so this is what it's like to be stood up. It's like, oh, no, girl. But she goes to the party anyway. I think she also goes, she's like, I have to keep my work relationships favorable for my brother's sake, too. So at first, you could tell she wanted to ditch the party because she was like, it's embarrassing for her to show up by herself after she's said she's inviting her partner. But also, she's like, I can't not go because then my brother will be, will be hurt by it. So... I, I give her props for going through with it because these ladies are not your friends. These ladies, especially Camilla, they're not your friends. They're the worst. I'd be like, I was ready to, to, to smack a girl for a second. It was like, mm-mm. And so she even brings her a housewarming gift. It's like, oh. And so, yeah, there, she's like, I thought you were coming with your boyfriend. She's like, oh, he got caught up with something. That's all that you need to say. That's it. Didn't have to... Didn't have to elaborate on it, but then they're like, what a lame excuse. How pathetic. And so then they, they actually make a pretty, a pretty bold assumption, but it's not that she's, she's not a spy. She's an assassin, but they're like, she's a spy who's been sent to lower our country's birth rate. And I'm like, that's so mean. What a bunch of trollops. No, how dare you? That's so mean. They're like nasty to her. It's, they're like, she's just unpopular with the guys. And so then I thought, I thought this one guy was going to come and hit on her, but it's Dominic who is, it's Dominic who is the boyfriend of Camilla and the one that knows her younger brother. That's the whole deal. And she's like, oh, don't worry. She's like, ah, oh, it's fine. And he's like, Yuri's always worried about you. As gullible and aloof as she seems, I could see that. I love her though. And she's like, oh, it's fine. Tell my brother I came with a kind gentleman so he won't worry. And then Camilla shows up and says, not happening. She's like, how desperate are you to impress people? And it's like, she's not desperate to impress people. She just wants to make sure her brother doesn't worry about her. Like this Camilla woman, she like talks about how she's pathetic. She was the worst in this episode. Yeah. I'm like, the guy's like, knock it off. And, ugh, she's just the worst, right? And poor Yor, she looks around and has the exact same moment that Lloyd did on the train. She looks around and sees all these people with like their kids and their families. And she's like, that's what it's like to be normal. She's like, I don't think I'll ever be able to have that. Just like Lloyd, right? It's so sad. Because yeah, she sees the one little kid. She's like, and there's that guy. And there's all the balloons. And then... We see this woman and that it is, oh my gosh, it is. Sharon's talking about her son being at the Eden College. Okay, Sharon is suspicious and her kid's at Eden College. Okay, and that's going to be interesting because she's going to see, she's going to see your with Lloyd and Anya there. Hmm. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. But she's like, this must be what normalcy is. Hmm. And that's so sad that she doesn't think that she'll get that. She's like, I'm sure that's how my brother wanted me to end up at. But I'm like, does her brother not know she's an assassin? Because if he knows that, then is he just expecting her to quit being an assassin? Is that it? Hmm. But, God. And the way that Camilla says, oh, seriously, she's still here? They say it just loud enough to where she can hear it. It's like, that's awful. Hmm. I'm surprised she had the nerve to show up alone. And then uh, Yor says, I'm too out of my league here. I'm like, no, they're out of your league. Like, ugh, I hate that she gets like that with herself. It's like, no. And then who shows up but her knight in shining armor bleeding from the head. <laughs> Just bleeding from the head. Like blood all down his suit. He's like, oh, my patient's got violent. And she's like, oh. It's like, I'm sorry for arriving late as he's like bleeding. I'm yours husband, Lloyd Forger. And she's like, She's like, I needed a boyfriend, not a husband. And he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I mixed my mission up with hers. And then the guy's like, um, you're bleeding. Is everything okay? And he's like, oh, yeah, sorry. My patients had a violent episode. Happens all the time as a, psychi as a psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Camilla just can't accept the fact that Yor is married to someone really hot. And Yor's like, um... And then Lloyd, cleverly, that's where this all works out brilliantly because Lloyd's like, oh, well, you see, I have a child and I didn't want it to be embarrassing 
for her, her to admit she was married to a man with a child. So we just decided to keep this on the down low until, you know, it's been hard to bring up until now. And I love that she kind of, Camilla like spins. She reminds me of like Jezebel off of Pokemon. She just spins. And she's like, there's no way you could have a hot, handsome man like that as her husband. It's like, no, really. And so then when she says I'll embarrass her in front of everybody, I'm like, that's like the oldest thing in the book, right? Her tripping and throwing the shrimp. I'm like, I've never understood the gag of throwing, of tripping and the food going on someone and that embarrassing the person. If anybody would be embarrassed, shouldn't it be the person that tripped and threw the food? Shouldn't they be the one embarrassed, not the person that got hit by it? I don't know. I've, I've seen that happen a time or two where someone has tripped and like spilled food on somebody else. But when the food is spilled on somebody else, they never, they're not embarrassed. Everybody always feels sympathetic towards them and are like, hey, are you okay? Like, oh man, that sucks. Like, you know, there's never been a moment where I was like, oh no, I got shrimp and rice spilled on me. I'll never be able to go out in public again. Like, I don't, I always thought it'd be the opposite. The person who spilled it on somebody would be the one facing the more judgment. And the other person that got hit would be sympathized with and everybody would kind of be like, oh, are you okay? Everything, everything all right? So yeah, this scene here, it doesn't quite add up. But man, yeah, girl just doing the and kicking and holding, holding the tray with the side of her foot. I'm like, oh my God. And Lloyd's like, huh, <laughs> real flexible, huh? He's like, I admire your dedication to not wasting food, but maybe not catch it with your feet, your. And she's like, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And then she just saunters over there and she's like, oh, Mr. Ranger. And he's like, it's Forger. And she even tries to like talk bad about your in front of this guy that announced at himself as her husband. Like, why are you the worst, Camilla? Why? And she's like, oh. And then I like the Dominic's like, hey, stop it. And she said, you men would call you to their hotel room so you could give them massages. And that, that whole massage thing is her tying up the assassin is hiding the assassination attempts. She uses the, the massage story when really she's going over to kill them. And she could even called her a whore. I was like, is that really your friend? I don't know any of my own friends that would call me a whore. I don't think I'd be friends with them at that point, but yours like, the messages were a cover for multiple murders. She's like, I really had to think of something and this just seemed the most logical. So yikes. Oh my God. Mm -mm. She's like, don't get the wrong idea, Lloyd. And he's like, it's wonderful. She's like, huh? It's like, and then, and then Lloyd, because he's like, Lloyd knows her backstory because he read her records. He's like, no guys, she lost her parents at a very young age. So don't you see? She did all she could to care for her younger brother. And even if it meant sacrificing herself, like, like she had to sell her body to save her family. And everybody's like, oh my it's great it's it's the perfect little scene between them he's like be it for someone else or for a specific reason having to endure a merciless job and he relates your to himself in this moment with the gun behind the behind the counter he relates her struggle of sacrificing herself with his own that's cool and he doesn't even know the assassin context of it not yet it requires an incredible amount of dedication and that's something to be very proud of and yours like <gasps> at that point I was like oh she's gonna be on board with marrying him <laughs> she's gonna be so on board and she even asked him to marry her because she needs that proof right oh man that's great and everybody's like stunned by his speech he's like let's go home your mm -hmm. oh my god it's so good and so we don't get the ED this time around. We actually go through it. Um, but we do get like shenanigans with Lloyd as well as your fighting off the people um, that are trying to hurt them. Again, she's not put two and two together that he is a spy, which is fine because it, that's the other thing that makes perfect sense in all this. She's an assassin. He doesn't know that. Anya knows it. But a normal person that would not be as aloof or gullible as her would start asking questions around the time that the car shows up. If I got into a vehicle whose windshield like had giant cracks in it from bullet holes, I'd probably ask some questions. <laughs> I'd probably ask some things, right? There's so many questionable, questionable moments in this, but because she's so gullible and aloof, it just 
goes all the way past her. She's just good at one thing, which is cleaning the house, right? Oh my gosh, it's great. But yeah, so we have Lloyd and Thor getting out there. Your, not Thor. But um, they decide that they're going to get married. And I, she says it would be nice camouflage getting married so that my brother doesn't suspect me. But she's having a double meaning there. She is going to say that it's for, um, it's, you know, to hide her being an assassin. And so I love it. It's great. But the whole, the grenade pin. Oh my gosh, the grenade pin. It, that part where he lost the ring. He lost the diamond ring. I was expecting him to whip it out and mm -mm, he lost the diamond ring. And so instead he uses a damn grenade pin. Like what a what a parody on the, on the spy and assassin trope. Especially for these two. In a, they're in a relationship to save the world. And I feel like the grenade pin's pretty appropriate. It's great. I love it. And he's like, we'll just stop back by City Hall on the way home and fill out the paperwork. And he's like, no time like the present. Let's do this. Oh my gosh. It's great. And that little shot of them like holding each other's hands, hiding behind the desk as the explosion happens. And oh my gosh, him putting, him putting the grenade pin on her finger as they hide behind it. And then saying their vows to one another, even in sickness or in sadness, no matter what hardships await us. <laughs> Let us be there for one another. She's like, okay, until my mission, until my killing, do us part. Come on, come on. That's so freaking cute. That was really adorable. So yeah, so we've met Yor. I love Yor. She's wonderful. She is gullible and aloof, but she's an assassin. She does not know that Lloyd is a spy. Lloyd does not know that she is an assassin. And neither of them know that Anya's a telepath. So honestly, Anya knows everything about everyone and no one else knows anything about anyone. So that's really cute. But I have a feeling that Yor is going to be best girl. I have a feeling she's going to be a waifu candidate too on the bracket. We're getting some fresh blood hopefully on the waifu and husbando bracket. I'm hoping. But yeah. Yeah. So I'm very, very curious to know your thoughts down below. Like I said, I'm recording this episode a little bit early, but by the time I do episode three, I'll have watched uh, episode one with y'all and we'll be able to incorporate your comments from there. So I'm very curious to know what you thought down below. Do you like your, um, no spoilers please about where the characters go, but if you liked her in this episode and you thought she's off to a great start, but yeah, if you guys have any spoilers, um, just please tag them below so I don't read it. But otherwise I look forward to reading your comments. Uh, later on this coming week. But in the meantime, I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back very soon with episode three of Spy Times Family. Bye.